Yeah, so this is Arna from Nibble. Um, basically, Nibble is a platform where you can create NFT backed editions. Um, you know, I've been working in this space since five years now. I used to work at Gnosis, Biconomy, Zalika. Um, and I became really interested in the NFT space. Um, and I was like, you know, what, what interesting product I can build. And uh, back then, you know, um, some high value NFT sales were just starting to happen. The Beeple $69 million sale and a couple of other sales. And then I thought these uh, assets are, you know, uh, the digital assets, NFTs, are represented by NFTs, they are defining culture um, in, in the world that we live in today. And people might want to own, like, you know, a lot of people might want to own um, some of these valuable assets that, you know, um, are, are, are defining culture in, in our world right now. So, um, yeah, this, this, is, this was sort of uh, the birth of Nibble. Um, nibble means to basically own, like take sm small bites out of. Um, and uh, yeah, like you can see, for example, these are some super valuable assets, uh, you know, World of Women, Doodle, Bored Ape, Clonex, whatever. Um, and owning them is something, you know, which is people have a lot of social clout and you can like add to your Twitter PFP. Um, you get access to a lot of community, um, you know, access to fellow uh, fellow minded community members of various NFT collections. Um, and then, yeah, you can do interesting things by owning these uh, rare assets. So uh, wh what the fuck are NFT backed editions, right? Um, so basically how it works is like you take an NFT, you lock it in a smart contract, and then you create uh, ERC1155 editions of the base NFT. Um, so for example here you can see we have a doodle which we logged in a contract and uh, you, it, we basically created a version um, which, which has the ETH uh, Dubai background um, on, on this uh, doodle. Um, and actually if you want to get one you can just come and, uh, and I'll give you this. Um, but basically these editions are not just created out of thin air. Um, owning an edition also means you own a piece of the base NFT. Um, and yeah, like once you are, once you create these ERC one one five five editions, like you can get hundreds or thousands of people to own uh, these together. Um, and owning an edition means that uh, you own a unique piece of art, and you also have ownership in the base NFT. <clears throat> and then also, uh, so Nibble, uh, what we do is we basically allow people to lock this in a contract, and there's also a mechanism where it can be made whole again as well. Uh, that, that is something which we call as the buyout mechanism, because if, if it always remains in, logged in the contract, the NFT you know, uh, will just stay logged there forever. So we have a mechanism uh, which we have built uh, at the protocol level where someone can come in and actually trigger a buyout and um, you know, make the NFT whole again, and the people who are holding the editions, they can actually uh, decide if they want the asset to be bought out by someone, like made, uh, bought out by and sort of made private, or they want to basically continue holding the editions and they want that NFT stays locked in a contract. Um, so yeah, that's, that's sort of how our mechanism works. <clears throat> And uh, right now we are sort of targeting two use cases. One, um, you know, we work directly with NFT collections, um, and then we also work with projects who uh, basically want to use the branding of a uh, of a collection, and basically, you know, it allows them to maximize crypto native community building. Um, and I'll, I'll just sort of explain. So this is, for example, we have uh, we we were working with this project called CoinShift. They are taking this Pudgy Penguin and they are uh, creating an edition where they are adding the you know company logo on the headphones and on 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 the sweatshirt the Pudgy is wearing. Um, and uh, what they are gonna do is like they are gonna create around 100 editions or so, and they will sort of use it to reward some very active users on their platform, and then also get some support from the Pudgy community. So it's an effective way where they are able to build, uh, increase their brand awareness in the crypto native. Uh, ecosystem um, where you know people really want to own valuable NFTs, and if people actually can own it and add it to the PFP or whatever, um, they it, it's it's great uh, community building for the company and then for people as well because they actually have uh, valuable NFT that they're owning. And then apart from that, we also worked with a couple of projects. So NFT Perp is one where uh, they are the leading like uh, platform f uh, where you can long and short NFTs. Basically, it's completely degen. Uh, but yeah, here you can see, for example, what they what they did is they took a, a My Lady NFT and they uh, logged it in a contract, and then they created editions uh, out of them that sort of um, they, they added their company logo on the earring of the My Lady, basically. And 
they, they are rewarding like people who are super active, um, like active traders on the platform with this uh, My Lady NFT. And uh, yeah, people, um, they, they are able to actually get a lot of support from the My Lady community because they are an NFT sort of NFT Fi project. And um, they are, I mean, targeting NFT communities is one of their, you know, BD strategy. Um, and basically, uh, they, they're one of the main use users are from the My Lady community. Um, so they basically yeah, created a, their own version, um, and like they created like ten editions out of them. If you own uh, like one edition, you also have ten percent ownership in the base uh, NFT. Um, and yeah, like you can, they 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 are gonna do this actually. Uh, they are running a campaign uh, around this actually right now for a month or so. Um, and yeah, we also, for example, are, have worked with this project called Daplist. Uh, they, they took an M4 and then they, uh, you know, bridged it from ETH to Polygon, actually. And then they uh, created the editions on Polygon. And all those editions had the uh, Daplist company's logo on the headphone of the M4. And it, it sort of became the most popular M4 with around, you know, at its peak, 400 people also having it as a PFP. Um, even right now, around 200 people also have it as a PFP, and um, yeah, it was great marketing uh, and branding for them because they were able to, you know, get a lot of support from the M First community, uh, get a lot of new eyeballs, and then they ran some interesting campaigns on social media where, you know, people who were ho um, people who were given this M um and they were they all sort of were owning this together, and uh, yeah, like they they all added as a PFP, so it was like you know on Twitter uh, sort of viral semi-viral sort of moment. Um, and then, yeah, we are also, like, you know, talking with a couple of other projects uh, who, who are, like, planning to do a similar campaign where they want to get some of the NFT communities, like, uh, holders uh, into their community by buying one of the NFT, making additions out of them, rewarding them. Um, so, yeah. And uh, then we also work with the uh, NFT collections. So basically, you know, um, we, for example, worked with this collection called Polygon Punks and a couple of others. And what they did is they created like a super rare NFT. It's like an alien hoodie NFT. Um, and this is like, uh, this doesn't exist actually in, in part of the base like punk collection. There's no alien hoodie. Um, and then what they are doing right now is they are running interesting campaigns where um, like they, are, they wanted to increase the size of the community without launching a whole new secondary collection. So what they did is they logged this in a contract and then they created uh, around 1,000 editions. Um, and then they sort of ran interesting campaigns with a lot of uh, other Polygon com uh, partner communities like, you know, uh, Billionaire Zombie Club, Quickswap, um, Polydoge, a couple of NFT collections and projects on the Polygon ecosystem. And uh, yeah, that they basically you know generated around 200, 300k views on Twitter because a uh, lot of these partner communities also want to sort of reward their community, their uh, community members or active users with valuable NFTs. Um, and this is not just some random poop or some random you know NFT that the project itself is creating. They are actually the communities themselves, uh, the people who are part of the, these communities, like let's say Quicksub, they all get you know um, addition of a of a valuable NFT. So yeah, the, um, with with collections, what we do is um, like our protocol allows them to get like thousand, two thousand, five thousand, whatever new people in their community by taking an NFT that is in their treasury, um, and then you know getting all those people to come um, in your community. Um, and how we see this with collections is like you have a base collection which has around ten thousand uh, NFTs and probably five thousand, two to five thousand members, and then you can have like on like. I mean, uh, on a con you can think of it like concentric circles. So uh, you have the base uh, super high engaged community, and then you have people who are holding some of these NFT bagged editions. They are also part of the community. They don't own a full NFT, but you know they are also sort of part of the community. Um, and then it allows you to get new members in in the community. Um, like for example, a lot of these collections can't actually you know once they go and say to the community that we are launching a whole new secondary collection. We are going to dilute our you know, number from 10,000 to 20,000 items. Then they face a lot of backlash from the community members. So um, on Nibble, what they can do is they can j just take one item from the 10,000 and then uh, get a lot of new people in the community by either selling those additions or just rewarding it to, uh, to people who are interested. Um, and yeah, like uh, apart from this, we have worked with a couple of other collections as well. So um, you know, we worked with this project called Dory Samurai, uh, where they actually rewarded people who were you know staking the NFT with 
editions of an other NFT and a couple of other projects like Good Minds and uh, yeah and, and stuff uh, and all the base the base idea is same like you you have an NFT uh, and you wanna like reward um, like lot of people with one NFT so you can come on Nibble and do 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 the same. Um, and yeah, now coming to the final sort of uh, what, what was my original topic, which is how can you get like millions to own it? Um, basically, the process is like you take an NFT and then you can bridge it to layer two. So for example, uh, on Polygon, if you want to bridge, you can use something like FX Portal um, or Polygon initially had their own Polygon POS bridge, which they are now not continuing with. But the FX portal is what uh, you can use, and you can bridge the NFT from ETH to Polygon. And then the additions you can create on Polygon where you can get like you know um, thousands or millions of people, because uh, the reward could be less than even one or two dollars, five dollars, or whatever, the value of one edition. Um, of course, right now, I, I guess Polygon, the p punk sort of floor price is probably around 150K USD or 120K USD. So probably not make sense to give it to one million people right now. I mean, the average uh, ticket size would be around 0.1 dollars or something like that. But um, yeah, you can sort of probably give it to 1,000, 10,000 people maybe easily right now. Um, you can either sell them or do some interesting mechanism where you are rewarding these people with. Um, and then in, in, in the future, if someone actually wants to make the punk hole again as well, uh, they can come to Nibble and you know trigger a buyout, so it's not like it, it will be remain it will remain in this additionized uh, form forever. Um, yeah, uh, and and yeah, it basically ha also just one point we'd like to add is like you can bridge it from layer two, you can make additions uh, of the NFT on layer two, and then it, the NFT itself can uh, you know be traded. The additions can be traded on our platform or some other platform. Uh, like OpenSea or whatever, and then um, if if it does get bought out, like someone actually you know unlocks the NFT from the contract, then um, they can even bridge it back from uh, Polygon to ETH. Um, yeah, and soon we are actually also going to be live on other chains like Arbitrum, Optimism, um, all EVM compatible chains, and you can bridge like valuable NFTs from ETH uh, to some of these chains using Layer Zero or Connect or some of these bridging solutions, and you can like get a lot of people in your community to uh, own some of these valuable NFTs. Um, yeah, and uh, for, for this talk, you can actually find me. Um, we have this ETH Dubai uh, edition of the Doodle. Uh, I think we have some time, so probably I'll just show you uh, how it looks as well. Uh, I, I finished with my slides a bit early. Um, but yeah, uh, we have this uh, Doodle, which uh, has the ETH Dubai uh, branding and uh, yeah you can see that um, uh, if you want like you can just come to me and I'll, I'll sort of give it to you like if you have one you also have around 0.5 percent of or ownership or something like that in the base doodle so it's not like some random you know addition that I'm just creating a creator out of thin air you actually get exposure uh, to the doodle market as well um, but yeah that's that's it um, any questions or anything someone wants to ask? Okay, cool. Thank you.